Hello, guys and gals. <laughs> Welcome back again. Um, listen, uh, a few days ago, or maybe a week ago, I posted a, a short, short clip. I did it to test something because I'm afraid of getting censored. Okay. If you can, if you can make a generator without lens, that means that the whole world is open again. Uh, we will be able to drive our cars without uh, electric cars without having to uh, hook it back up again. So as I was saying, uh, what what this means is, if you take uh, a generator and say it doesn't have any lens, no braking. It acts like a flywheel. So once you start turning it, it it'll take a little effort to start turning it because one of Newton's law, right? Uh, an object in motion will want to stay in motion, but an, uh, an object that's not in motion to get it running, it's, it, it, it's going to take a little bit of effort. But once that flywheel starts turning, uh, it takes very little energy to to keep it turning. So let's say that's your rotor with all your magnets. And uh, you, you put a coil uh, next to it and it gives you 30 watts of power. And then you put another coil around the circumference again and another 30 watts of power. And because you made it lens free, it does have no drag on your rotor your rotor will keep spinning at the same amount of energy. It'll keep using, say for example, 100 watts of energy to, to turn it, right? <clears throat> but every time you put another coil, you're adding energy, electrical energy to that equation. So that pretty soon you're gonna come up with uh, a, a certain amount of coils that is producing the same amount of consumption. That's equilibrium, that's breaking point. But you can still go over that because it doesn't matter how many coils you put on uh, around it, around the rotor, because there's no braking effect. So once you figure that out, then the world is yours, electrically speaking. So like I said, I was a little bit afraid, so I kind of tested the waters a little bit, but thankfully, uh, I believe nobody understood it. So I'm going to take the risk right now and explain uh, the prototype so that you understand what's going on and how you can trick the lens effect so as to not affect your rotors, okay? We're going to trick the lens effect. Lens is magnetic. Okay, lens is magnetic. So it's like an action reaction. You take a, a magnet, you go towards it, it produces a reaction that goes against against your magnet in the same polarity. So so if you got a north pole going in, into a coil, it produces a north pole coil. So it, it kind of it bumps heads. Okay, so that's how we, we're, we're making uh, electrical energy right now. But look at this prototype and I will explain to you why this one doesn't do that, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, so here we have uh, an example of the prototype core. I did that on purpose. Notice that the core is overextended. 
I mean, if I were in the Bedini days, they would like, ah, no, you can't do that. It has to be neat. It has to be neat. Cut off all that extra, right? But no, there's a reason for that. The reason is uh, when the magnets come towards, you know, it's in rotation, right? Two magnets, one on each rotor, opposing south, north. So when they come close to the the the, the core, uh, magnetism is kind of lazy. So it's going to take the shortcut route. So anytime you have iron, and you can see from, from the picture, it's going to take the shortcut. It doesn't care how much iron you have above and beyond the area that it needs to make the shortcut. It's going to go through the shortcut because it's lazy. It wants to get positive and negative. Boom. Magnetism wants to cancel itself out. Magnetism is what we did to separate these uh, inertias. That's what we did when we when we made the magnet. So now it wants to go back together. And what you are doing is you're providing a path for the magnet to do that, to cancel it, itself out. So that's why I'm saying magnetism is lazy. It wants to cancel itself out. So here you go. You, you bring an iron core and normally it would extend outwards on both sides. The magnetism that you bring it towards, it would extend on both sides like the picture depicts. But that's not normal what we're doing right now. We're putting two poles, a south and a north. So what happens, it takes the shortcut route. It wants to cancel its, itself out. So instead of looking at the core the long ways again, it doesn't have any need to go out. It wants to shortcut. So uh, you don't lose any magnetism. Actually, you gain a really strong force. All right. So anyway, this produces a lot of electrical energy. And you have nothing to lose. It doesn't go, magnet, the magnet that's producing this energy doesn't extend outwards like that example there. So anyway, what happens is now, now you, you create lens because anytime you wrap uh, a core, ferrite, whatever you may have, even cable, iron cable, you wrap it around uh, with copper, you're going to create the lens effect, okay? That's bottom line. We, we can't get rid of that lens effect. So, But, but you need to know is lens effect uh, concentrates in two areas, not where the coil is, but at the ends, at the ends, like the, like the picture depicts, at the ends. And... And lately, in our modern day generation, we've been passing the, the magnets right over this concentration point. Duh! We've been doing that for 180 years. But what this prototype does, it allows the magnetism to, to make its lens. But remember, lens is a magnetic energy. And if you were a betting man and you were at the casino and the odds are 6,000 to 1, that lens is going to take the metallic route versus the air route. If I were a betting man, I would say, I'm going to put some money on the 6,000 to 1. That's the permeability of iron against air so why on earth would that lens go back to the rotor there's air uh, air gap why on earth would it jump to the rotors no it wants to go through the metal 
6,000 to 1. So if I were a betting man, I would bet on the long prototype because it favors the diffusion of your lens. So now lens has no interest in jumping across and, and, and putting a, a magnetic bind on your rotors anymore like our current system does. So there you go. Hope you understand that. Thank you very much, okay? God bless you. And if it's worth a dollar to you, please send a, a, a dollar, thank you, to, to the PayPal account. God bless you. Hey, gentlemen. Uh, this is Alex again. And I wanted to give you a little, little message. You know, it takes a lot of hard work uh, for, for me to take the time and uh, find the results on in the internet and find the results uh, encyclopedias. And it takes a lot of time from, from very little time that I have. And I would appreciate it. I mean, I have 3,000 subscribers. I would appreciate it if someone gets 30 cents worth of information for my videos that they would donate. I will put a link to my PayPal. 30 cents means a lot to me. Let's say a thousand of you sent 30 cents to me. That's $300. That's enough for me to buy some uh, powerful magnets, a lot of copper, a lot of uh, wire, magnet wire. And it would mean a, a great, mean a lot to me if you guys did that. 30 cents. Ideally, if some of you are more generous, ideally a dollar would be perfect. But anyway, the little information that I give out to you, I would appreciate if you kind of help me out so that I can do more videos like this. And I think I can walk you through making a generator that you're gonna love. You would have in your possession a generator uh, that requires very little effort to generate a big amount of electricity. That's what you would have on hand. So is it worth anything to you? I don't know. Hopefully it, it is because that could take you to bigger and better things, okay? If you know how to make a small generator, you'll know how to make a large generator also, okay? So hopefully you'll do that for me. Send me a like and also a little 30 cents worth of, of love, okay? Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.